Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk all about RAID, R-A-I-D. This is from our CompTIA a 220-701, Section 1.2. So this is the Essentials exam. So we need to understand the essentials of these motherboard components, specifically contrasting the different RAID levels, Level 0, RAID Level 1, and RAID Level 5. That's all the requirements say that you need to know about. And in fact, those are really the most common RAID that you will see out there when you start working with RAID type of, of arrays and different disks. Let's first talk a little bit about RAID and what it is. We'll also talk about the different levels of RAID. You're very, very often tested on those kinds of things. And there is a difference between doing RAID in software and doing RAID in hardware. We'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of both of those. Let's start with an overview of what RAID is. RAID is an abbreviation, R-A-I-D. It stands for a redundant array of inexpensive disks. Now, the disk industry said, we don't like calling these inexpensive disks. They're, we'd like to call them something that's a little bit less cheesy. So let's call it independent. So you'll sometimes hear it referred to as a redundant array of independent disks. You know, one time, disks were very, very expensive. So it made sense to call them inexpensive. You could take a lot of disks that didn't cost a lot, put them together, and have the same redundancy and extra capabilities that you might have with much more expensive disks. And as a result, it turns out we all went to these inexpensive disks. So it's kind of redundant today to say inexpensive disks. So independent probably in, in the long run is a little more explanatory about what we're really doing with our disks. There are different levels of RAID. Just because you say something is running at a certain RAID level doesn't mean it's redundant. It may be running at a RAID level that does not support redundancy. So just because you're running in a, a group of disks together into a format that is a RAID type of array doesn't necessarily mean that you're protected should one of those disks fail. Not all RAID levels provide that level of redundancy. We're going to talk about RAID 0, which is also referred to as strike. You'll know why in a moment. RAID 1, which is referred to as mirroring, and RAID 5, which is striping with parity. These different capabilities can do different things for you. And depending on how your RAID configuration is set up and what you're trying to get out of it, you may be setting up any one of these to work on your particular system. Let's first talk about striping. Striping, just like the name sounds, is where you're taking the data and you're splitting the files between physical drives on your system. So block one of the file you'll put on one disk, block two on another. If you have more disks in your RAID array, you can even split it across more disks. I'm just showing two of them in this particular example. So I'm splitting the file, part of it here, part of it there. Block three, block four, five and six, seven and eight, and onward and onward. Now, you'll often uh, do this because you want very high performance from your disks. In fact, very often you'll have a set of one disk that's on one hard drive controller and another disk that's on a completely different hard drive controller so that you're splitting the file between the disks. You're essentially only writing half the information you would normally write to each disk. And so it's much faster when it's writing or reading this information, especially when writing information. Very, very fast in the way that it performs. That's usually why you would want to stripe things that way with RAID 0. But notice that if I was to lose a disk, that's it. I've lost the data. There is no redundancy built into this. If I lose a drive, this is now broken my RAID array, and my data is no longer available. So if you are really concerned about performance and you're doing striping, just make sure you have a really good backup. Because as soon as you lose a disk, your entire set of files is completely gone, completely worthless. You only have half of what you had before. So there is no redundancy in a RAID 0 configuration. If you do need redundancy, then you may want to think of something like RAID 1. And RAID 1 is called mirroring. And it kind of makes sense to call it that because what we're taking is everything on one disk is exactly duplicated on another disk. So block 1 is the same on both disks. Block 2, exactly the same. Block 3 and block 4. When we save a file, the RAID array understands you're saving a file to disk, it saves it across both of them. Whether you're running that in software RAID or hardware RAID, doesn't matter. They all work the same. If we are mirroring on one disk, 
to another, then it's going to be exactly the same across both the disks. Now, this also means you're using a lot of drive space. You essentially need twice as much drive space to store the same amount of information. Every file is duplicated on every disk. Every block is exactly the same. So if you need 100 gigabytes of disk space and you're going to set up RAID 1, what you really need is 200 gigabytes of physical drives to be able to store, ultimately, only 100 gigabytes of disk space. But that may be a good thing for you because now you've got complete redundancy. If you lose a disk, you now have another drive to pull from. The RAID array automatically recognizes you've lost a drive and just uses your original drive this way. The idea is that you'll get a message up on the server screen. You'll get a page. You'll set up a system so that you are alerted if there is a disk problem so that you can then pop out the bad disk, pop a new one in, and the RAID array automatically rebuilds this so that suddenly you've now got a mirror of everything. Now, obviously, if you lose one disk, you're fine. If you lose two disks, you run into a problem when you're running with a two-disk mirror. So that, that can be an issue. You want to be sure if you lose a drive that you replace it as soon as possible so that you maintain that level of redundancy and uptime that you've built because you put in RAID 1 to begin with. RAID 5 takes this idea of speed and redundancy and being able to access your data if there's a failure and really takes it to the next level. So this is called RAID 5 striping with parity. So what we're going to do is very similar to our RAID 0 where we striped information. We'll put for our files uh, a block of one file on three disks. And the fourth disk, we're not going to put part of the file. What we're going to run is a calculation to determine a parity of those three. And we're going to put a parity block on the last disk. We put parity on different disks too. For instance, the second file, we have block one, two, and three spread across three other disks. And the parity is really on this third disk here. Obviously, the parity here, I'm putting these in different places so you can see that parity might be anywhere. And here's the idea. If I was to lose this particular disk three here, we lost that hard drive. It failed. Well, this, this particular file would be OK, because block 1, 2, and 3 are right here. The problem, however, the second file, the green one, block 1B, 2B, and block 3B, we lost block 3B. But since the parity is here, your particular drive array can reconstruct what was originally on block 3B, because I already have block 1B and 2B to choose from. I simply perform that same calculation in reverse, and now I can determine the lost information that I had. So even though I lost a physical drive, and I'm not exactly mirroring the information between disks, I'm still able to recreate and keep redundancy all the way through in this particular scenario just because I have that parity block there. Now, it also doesn't duplicate all of my disk space either. I'm still using a set of disk space here for parity. In this particular scenario, I'm using one of those four disks essentially as parity. But it's not using half or, or doubling, essentially, the amount of space that I would need. So there's a, a lot of redundancy here. If I lose a drive, I'm still up and running. My data is still available. Unfortunately, if you're running this in a software RAID, the calculation of that parity process can have an impact on the CPU performance of your system. And on some older RAID arrays, it has an impact on the RAID array itself. These days, the modern RAID arrays, the CPUs are pretty good. You don't really see a slowdown if you lose a disk so much. But in that scenario, you may notice if you're running this RAID 5 in software, that suddenly things are slowing down when you access disks. That may be the reason why. And it may be a warning to you that it's time to fix the disk that went bad so that we're not having to recalculate the parity all the time. And if you've ever replaced a drive like this in a RAID array, you know all you really do is you pop the drive out. It's usually in an array format where the, the, the drives are hot swappable, which means while the system is powered up and turned on, you can pull out the disk and slide a new fresh disk in. The array recognizes that it is a new disk and now begins recreating all the information that was from that older disk. So if you're running a RAID 1 or a RAID 5, the recreation process, very easy to do, very simple to go about doing something like that. There are differences between software-based RAID and hardware-based RAID. That redundant set of disks in a software mode is usually built into the operating system. So if you're running Linux, you're running Mac OS, you're running a Windows-type environment, those usually provide you with some level of RAID. Windows Server environments have even more choices of RAID to choose from. So it doesn't require that you have a special hard drive controller, that the hard drive controller be set up in a particular way, that you have things set up uh, in, a, in, a, in a hardware or multiple slots within your computer. It doesn't matter 
because it's all done in the operating system. Now, the problem is that this is probably a lower performing environment than hardware based. Because if you have a hardware controller in your system that's doing RAID in hardware, it usually has specialized processors and buffers just for performing those RAID functions. If you're doing this in software, your operating system is now doing that. Now, depending on how much you use your drives, you may not be able to tell a difference at all. But it is having an impact. And usually, software based RAID is a lower performing than hardware based. If this is a hard drive array, it's going to be used in a medical environment. There's going to be a lot of people hitting this database. It's a massive set of hard drives. You probably don't want to use software based. You want to focus on having a dedicated, specialized hardware based RAID array to do that. And that's because hardware based RAID, it's built into the hard drive controller. The operating system doesn't even know it's there. The operating system, if you're mirroring drives in a RAID array in hardware, it sees one disk. It doesn't know that it's mirrored. It has no idea. Completely invisible to the operating system. The operating system writes to that hard drive controller as it always does. The hard drive controller knows, aha, I am mirrored. I'm going to take what the operating system is giving me, and I'm going to write it to these two drives simultaneously and let the operating system know, I wrote that one file that it asked for. The OS is none the wiser. This is usually almost always when you need high performance. Because RAID arrays, they aren't exactly a cheap piece of hardware to get. There are usually custom processors. There are usually buffers, memory that's set aside for this. There's a, a cost for the hardware. And obviously, it's something you have to keep in mind if you're putting one of these together. So there's benefits to cost, but there's also benefits to performance depending on which one of these you use, either a software-based RAID or a hardware-based RAID. Let's see what we can remember about this particular module on RAID. Our first question is, which RAID type duplicates information across drives? This would be an exact duplicate on one drive exists on the other drive. And if you think back, that's a RAID 1 or mirroring of those particular RAID drive in the arrays. Uh, how does RAID 5 provide redundancy? Well, there is redundancy there, but it's not RAID 1. It's not mirroring the information. How does it do it? It uses parity to be able to do that. Calculates the parity when it writes the file. If it loses a drive when it's reading back, it recalculates the entire file based on what the parity value happens to be. And lastly, what is an advantage that hardware RAID has over software RAID? If you recall, there were some differences between the two. One big advantage that hardware has is that it's very, very high performing, especially if you have a failure and you're having to recalculate the files based on the parity information that's there. Generally, your hardware-based RAID is going to have processors and buffers to be able to handle that at a fast, fast speed. Very nice to have in a category, a RAID 5. Uh, configuration when you're dealing with that hardware config. Well, that should give you an overview of RAID. We've looked at all of those different levels you need to know for your CompT exam, RAID 0, RAID 1, and RAID 5. And we've contrasted and compared the differences between a software RAID configuration and a hardware RAID configuration. We've got much more available. Our entire index of a courses is available on our website. We've got message boards. And we've got a lot more there. You can come see it all on our website at freeaplus.com. Oh,